Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm the chief here in Budding Can Handmade, and in today's video, we're going to try resin again. In my first video, things didn't go very well, but that was mainly because I went for, and that one is not good for people who are impatient like me. So now I'm trying with epoxy resin and hopefully everything will go better this time. So the instruction says that epoxy resin needs to be stirred until it is clear to the eye and I'm not sure you can see it but right now you can barely see my fingers under here. That's usually what I use. I mean, as a reference. You usually have to stir it from three to five minutes or so, let it rest a little bit, which is what I usually do. I let I stir, let it rest, and then I stir again. They say that you should stir it slowly to avoid air bubbles, but you can also use a heat gun after you put it into the mold to remove any bubbles that surface. The first one I started stirring looks a tad clearer now. You can see the reflection of my fingers under. But uh, a few more stirs and I think it should be safe. So for these molds, I have a couple more out of the outside the camera. I'm gonna try to go for a more pastel look. I don't have any pastel colors, and the colors I have are from Nurture Soap, Soaps or Mad Micas, which are mica. But they work just the same. You just have to be a lot careful when you're stirring because you don't want any of the colored chunks to stay into your final piece. So I'm going to try this for the first time. I hope it works. I'm going to give it a few white that's on both to see if I can make the color lighter. Hopefully this integrates. If it doesn't, we'll just go with the old fashioned way. So I bought these molds specifically for resin because I have, a, I have quite a few molds that I use for my soaps that are just as good. So if you're a soaper and you want to try resin, you can always use your the, those the you can always use the molds you have lying around. But I wanted to have a collection that's just for my resin. So I'm going to add the strawberry red mica to this one. Just a pinch of it, very very light. This isn't like soap. You don't have to put in a lot of color. And I'm. See, just a teeny tiny bit. And in this one, I'm going to be pouring in some Brilliant Blue Mica from Nurture Soaps too. Just a pinch. I'm also going to add some, some Nina Simone Sparkles from my Micas. Just a pinch too. And then I'm gonna mix until everything is incorporated. So this is the final colors. It's not super pastel, but it's as best as I can do, given the situation that I don't have any pastel colors. I need to buy some. So the trick for both colors to come out pretty is to wait, let it sit for a while until it gets thicker, and then pour both at the same time. Or you pour one in one corner and the other one in another corner. Okay, so now we're going to start with the moon mold. So we're going to start pouring it from this corner. Then I'm going to pour from this corner. Oh, the colors aren't that bad. I might try to go for like a blue midnight... Blue Midnight type of, type of combination next time for the moon mold. I also purchased um, another uh, two more molds that are stars. So one of them is like this big, which is gigantic. It's practically the palm of my hand. And the other one is, and the other one is more grippy. It's like this sized. So now I'm going to 
try to stir a little bit of the color so it doesn't have that weird line there. I'm going to push the pink up. There we go. This is how it's gonna look. My table is a bit tilted, so the colors just go everywhere. But this is how it's gonna look. And we're going to be demolding it in a little bit so you guys can see the final result. I usually demold them earlier than what you're supposed to because I've had like a, a bad experience before. <laughs> I've had a bad experience where I cannot, for the life of me, put in the little pin to make it a keychain or whatever it is I want to do with it. So I demolded it uh, when it's still kind of soft but still solid. And put in, the, put in the pin and then I don't touch it again until it's ready. So see those little air bubbles? You just go in, bam, bam, bam. Okay, I had to do bam three times. But you go in and you just squish them and they go away. I usually tap them like I do with my soaps. I usually tap them like I do with my soaps to try and get rid of the as much as as many air bubbles as I can. Um, it's worked for me so far, so my soap knowledge has come through. <laughs> I poured in a little bit too much on this one. If I don't move it too much, it'll be fine. I already made these two molds because um, I had a few friends that saw the molds before I got them and they were very excited for them and they wanted me to make them a piece. So I already tried a few before on camera. I know I usually try everything with you guys for the first time. So I thought that since I already I tried UV resin, this wasn't going to be that much different. Only, you know, the molds. So I'm sorry for that guys. So I have like three videos ready for you guys, but for some freaking reason, but for some reason my iPad where it where it's where I download and edit the videos doesn't want to save them. It says some kind of error movie what uh, what am I call it? And it's really sad because I promised that I was going to upload more often, at least two videos a month. But I can't do that if my videos don't want to come out. So I had to make a bit more because I ran short. So I'm going to remix all of this again. This one has a lot of air bubbles, way too many air bubbles. Okay, so if you have too many air bubbles like I had on that one, um, what's recommended is that you take your heat gun, you put it on low, and you just lean on it until the air bubbles are gone. I could not show you guys up front what I did because where I'm pouring my resin, I have like no outlet. The outlet I have actually doesn't so my camera died, which is kind of typical for me. I need to seriously buy another battery pack. Anyways, this is this is all the molds I poured. The camera and the light are not giving it any justice, but I am going to be jumping into the unmolding now. I just wanted to wanted you guys to see how it looks in the mold. So yeah. Let's go ahead and start unmolding these guys. So we're back the next day to start unmolding. This feels kinda like making soap to me because I always have to wait until the next day to unmold them. With resin, I try 
to I'll try to wait at least 12 hours maybe try to unmold it in the same day because when I want to put in the little the little screw pin it's too soft so it's not as hard for me to put it in so this is how the moon looks it's still pretty it's still kind of soft when it's this soft I mean it's not super soft but when it's this soft I like to quickly put in the pin because then I struggle so much or they just I just leave them like this and they don't become keychains or danglers or anything because I could not put in the screw pin this is how it looks I think it looks pretty good let's go with the third doll so sparkly so sparkly so I got this mo turtle mold from Charla supplies as you can see I have two different types of molds the clearer ones are I mean the lighter ones I are from Charla supplies and these ones are from cats resin supplies I am This one is from Cat's Rest and Supplies. They both make their own designs. So, this one ended up really cute. It has one blue eye, one blue eye, and one pink one. <laughs> Cuties. So, these molds are a lot harder for me because you can also put in little uh, baby oil in here to make it as a shaker. But I always struggle when sealing, sealing them because... Well, it doesn't always stick, so let's go with the avocado. This is again Chara Supplies. It's really cute. The first batch I made with the Chala Supplies molds because I hadn't had the... My cat's resin supplies hadn't arrived. These are going to be up in my shop probably by the time I post this video, unless I post this today. So you can get your little babies over there too. I love these uh, Baba shakers. They are so freaking cute to me. I absolutely love them. I'm waiting for another mold maker to open up her shop again so I can buy the shakers, her shakers, because she has very different ones, a bunny, a cat one. Uh, I already have a bear one and yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm so I'm waiting for her, for her to open shop. This one is a little ghosty. I made a version of this one that was glow-in-the-dark but pastel style is really cute too I mean I think this might be more popular where I study I'm not sure but I know people love pastel colored things for some reason especially in videos so I also made Jack Jack has been the most popular one because I made some of these for a craft fair and Jack was the most popular one. This one didn't take in the colors that well but once I paint on the face it'll look just fine because Jack's, Jack's a skeleton and skeletons are white or either um, a yellow after you know. But the back is really nice people will uh, I'm sure people will still like it.
Hey, this is my first time using the Pokeball mold and I really like it. It looks really nice. I'm digging this, yeah. It's gonna be a pain in the because it has a division here and when I put in the baby oil or the charms, it's gonna, it's gonna be a pain in the Two, one more mold to go. Oh, this one's stuck in there. Ta -da! This one is probably gonna be B, B grade because one of the eyes, for some reason, ended up shorter than the other. If I can cut it and level it, it'll be fine. But yeah, I think it's just gonna end up as a B grade. Look at those shiny babies. So, two of them got messed up, kind of messed up, but the rest of them ended up really well, so that's a win for me. No failing resin this time, guys. <laughs> so, I poured in the extra batter I had for the, I mean, the extra resin I had from the pink one into this little teeny tiny kitty shaker. It's really small. Um... It's not very popular for some reason. The one, the most popular one has always been Jack. And I think of all of them, the moon, Pokeball, and, and the cupcake are gonna be the most popular ones from, of these batches, of the pastel colored ones. So I brought over some of the glow-in-the-dark ones in case you guys are curious. Um, this is the final, the final jack. You can see the shaking, shaking in there. So for these to glow in the dark, you have to charge them a bit with sunlight or in the UV light, it's gonna show. And then there you go, ta-da! This is still really light inside, but and these are the most popular. As you can see, I already drew in the the little eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So this one is basically gonna end up like looking like this one, except it won't glow, and it just will have its its whole face in there. I also made this one. This is the final product. Oh, it got stuck. Wait, there you go. This one I made for Halloween. Oh, this one This one was the first one I made. That's why it doesn't have a lot of um, baby oil inside because I failed miserably in the first batch. But this one is the same as the other ones. If you want to see it glow, you either put it under a UV light, charge it, or put it out in the sunlight, and bam, I'm greeny glowy now. See? I really like these glow in the dark. That's why I want to make a video of how I made these for you guys to enjoy. I made it, like I said, I made a glow in the dark moon. So if you guys want to like customize any of the molds you see here, you can always talk to me because I am more than willing to do that because I am both resin and soap obsessed now. Well, thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, I hope this video reaches you without any problem. <laughs> And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.